Hey girls, it's Kishi. It's been a long time since I've done a video update. Um, everything is good. Um, let's see, I don't even know what week I was the last time I did a video. But I've done two level 2 ultrasounds. I had one at 18 weeks and one last week, which I was 20, 23 weeks and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four days. Um, and baby looks good. He was weighing at 23 weeks and four days. He was weighing one pound and four ounces. And they said that's like perfect. And then I go back in four weeks from then, so three weeks from this Thursday for, I think they said like a growth and measurement type ultrasound to make sure he's growing properly. Um, he's still a boy, which I already had that confirmed with the amnio. Um, okay, I've been super busy like in my personal life. Let's see, as everybody knows now that I, m my husband and I got married on New Year's and so I finally got, I'm getting like a lot of the paperwork and everything finished. I received the official marriage license in the mail a couple weeks ago. Then I've gone to the Social Security office and I applied for a new Social Security card. Then I was able to go the following day, 24 hours later, I was able to go to the DMV and I got a new driver's license with a new last name. And I just received my Social Security card in the mail yesterday, which I'm excited about. And now I can take that and fax over to all of the, the, the license the driver's license, the marriage license, and the social security card over to my health insurance so they can change my name and then change my health insurance plan for the baby, so like change his name too. Because I don't want any confusions at the hospital, I don't want anyone getting our baby or anything. Um, and so I just came back from my 24 week appointment with a midwife. I'm super excited. I know a couple months ago I was telling you about I was seeing, um, sorry, that's my husband. A couple months ago, I was telling you about how I was being seen at the high risk and that if everything came back normal on the level two, that I could transfer to the hospital that's right next to my house. And that's where I went today is the, the doctor's office. It's in the same group, but now it's not high risk anymore. I'm a, and I got to meet with the midwife. And so I'm super excited about that. I, asked, I wrote down a bunch of questions that I asked her. Like right now, um, last week, the baby boy's little leg, he was like doing a split. One was up by his face. I felt so bad. Like, I'm like, is that normal? Is he okay in there? Like, I'm, well, I feel bad. Like, I'm like, can I drink more water or something to help him so he has more space so he can bring that little leg down and get comfy? Um, I asked her about pacifiers. I do plan on trying to breastfeed. I'm just kind of going with the flow. If it works, it works. If I can't handle it, it hurts or, you know, hurts to the point that not manageable. I know it's going to hurt in the first couple of weeks and I will get used to it, but for whatever reason, um, I'm going to try it. And I asked her about pacifiers and she said that pacifiers should be okay once you get the latch down. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to give my baby a pacifier or not. I'm not really totally against it. I'm, I'm making my baby registry and everyone's like, oh, you should at least put a couple on there just in case. So I'm going to do that. I don't know if there's anybody can suggest some that are, you know, breastfeeding friendly, but the nurse, uh, the midwife told me that um, it should be fine as long as the baby has a latch down. But she said one thing you might want to try not to do is give a bottle. She's like, the bottle, which is the fact that they get um, so much liquid out of it so easily that it might hurt them in the fact of not wanting to breastfeed anymore on your nipple because they're not going to get as good of a flow so they'll be like they're going to want the easier <laughs> food access so she said try not to do a bottle if, if you can um, and then let's see I am going to put on my registry the I think it's the Medela manual hand pump, just in case, and I'm going to get, I believe, Dr. Brown's glass um, baby bottle, so I'm going to pump, I think the pump, you attach it to their plastic bottles, and I'll fill those, and then pour it into the glass ones for storage, for emergency. Um, 
and then weight gain so far I started at I'm five two and a half and I started at 111 pounds and I lost six pounds and was down to 105 but now I'm up to 117 so in the plus ways I am six pounds above and she said you know the normal weight gain for this time she said for 24 weeks is about 23 er sorry the normal weight gain for 23 weeks is about 7 to 10 pounds so I'm just under the normal weight gain but she said the fact that I did lose weight and now if, as long as I keep eating you know healthy and enough and drink lots of fluids and then that's another thing on my urine today I have a little bit of ketones in my urine and she said it's because I'm probably dehydrated which I didn't I normally do drink like my little carnation breakfast in the morning and everything but I fat like I you know, I was fasting because I wasn't sure if they were going to do the glucose test, the glucose test or not. So I didn't drink any liquid or anything like before I went in. I just ran out of time trying to get ready and get to there on, on time. So like, um, you know, I had to drink more fluid. She said. And then, let's see. Oh, circumcision. Um, I, you know, my husband and I want our little boy to get circumcised, and. Um, my insurance does not cover it, so we have to pay $350 to get it done, and it has to be done within two weeks of him being born, and we have to bring him, they're not going to do it at the hospital to save us costs, because then the hospital will, will tack on charges of their own, but if I bring him in within a week of him being born at, at um, my doctor's office, at the OB's office, any of, the, any of the doctors there can perform the circumcision, but I have to pay the $350 up front. And then I asked her about a birth girdle or some kind of belly bandit or anything like that. She didn't know what brands to recommend, but she said a lot of women do like them. Uh, it makes you just feel better with more support. And um, so if anybody knows of, that has experience with wearing one of those after pregnancy, please leave a comment below and let me know which kind you liked. Um, I don't care, you know, if it's a cheap, generic one, that would be awesome if it works okay. I know I read some reviews online and a lot of the people are complaining, regardless if it's the most expensive one or the least expensive one, how they keep bunching up or riding up and to keep adjusting and stuff like that. So my kind of theory on that, my guess is, if the expensive ones and the cheap ones do it, I might as well go with the cheap one. But if anyone can strongly recommend one that they know that works and it wasn't too bad with the riding up and stuff, um, please let me know. And okay, I asked her, when do I go to the hospital? To deliver, and she said that my next appointment, at the 20 week or 28 week appointment, we'll talk more about that. And she's like, it all depends on the contractions and stuff like that, and the amount of blood loss, and if the water broke, and any of that. Um, I asked her about IV during delivery and labor and everything. She said that they like to at least have the vein and everything set up, and, um, and since it, I'm going to try natural. They said that it will probably, take, and it's my first baby, that it will take probably a long time through labor and you're not supposed to eat or drink anything in case of emergency C-section. So they might want to just do the IV to give me some fluid so I don't become like over dehydrated. Um, but she said that they just leave the thing in your arm, but you're free, they, they can take it, like they can unattach it to the bag and everything. So that you, if you want to walk around and or sit on a ball or anything like that to try to help with gravity to get the baby coming out faster, <laughs> you can do that. And then I asked her about delivering. Can I deliver like standing up or squatting type thing? I mean, I know people who have delivered <laughs> are probably gonna laugh at this video because I, I know that I'm in for like a tremendous amount of pain but I just wanted to know the options. Um, so she said no, they don't deliver standing up in this hospital or squatting or leaning against anything. They like you to be laying, you know, down or, you know, propped up but laying on the bed. That way with your first delivery, they can kind of watch, um, is it your perineum? Just to make sure you don't tear down there. And so they can keep a close eye so if they can massage or, you know, put pressure there or something when the baby's coming out to try to help so it doesn't rip, they'll do that. And so, yeah, obviously I don't want to rip, but um, but I'm free to walk around until, before, like, before I start pushing. And 
they don't have tubs at my hospital. They don't have water birth, they don't have tubs, and I can't bring in anything inflatable to put water in either. Which I'm pretty bummed about that, because not that I wanted to do a water birth, but it, like I wanted, if I could, I would try, but, but I just really wanted it to go for the labor, because I am going to be trying natural, so I thought maybe the jets on my back or something like that might be soothing for the contractions or the pain. But they don't have that there, so. Oh well. <laughs> and then I asked about, um, can constipation restrict the movement on the little baby? And she said, yeah, it can, but not a, like a, a huge amount. And she said, but you should try to get regular now and definitely try to become more regular. So if it's raisins or some kind of grain or something that helps you, you know, make a movement every day or more regularly and lots of fluids and everything. Um, she said that colace is fine, I have, like a stool softener. So she said that um, I could take one of those every single day, you know, uh, to try to help me become more regular because otherwise in delivery, you don't want to be pushing. The baby's going to help push all your stool out, and uh, nobody wants that to happen. <laughs> um, and I asked her about high, how high can the heart rate, like how high can my heart rate be if I want to work out or exercise? And she said that they don't measure heart rates anymore. It's kind of just how you how you feel if you can handle it. Don't overdo it, but um, just whatever is comfortable for you. Because I, if I go on the treadmill and I put it on incline about like two, because <laughs> I, I pre-pregnancy I used to do it all the incline all the way, and I would hold on or whatever while I walk, but like it. I don't know, I just felt like it was the most intense, even though I was holding on, it still felt good. Um, but now I was trying, like, it's just like a one or a two, and at a very, very slow pace, like, turtle's pace, and my heart rate was already, like, 140. And so I know somebody said on here, I think it was Mandy, that 140 was what their doctor told them, don't try to go higher than that, but the nurse, the midwife said that they don't go by that anymore, do whatever is comfortable. Um, and and then I asked her about in the morning sometimes when I take a hot shower and I'm getting ready and I'm standing up too long, I get really, really dizzy and like nauseous and I feel like I'm going to pass out. And I was scared to tell her because of how hard I tried to get into the, the non-high risk category that I was scared to tell her what was going on. But, you know, I didn't, I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't anything I should definitely be concerned about. And she... She said that it's not low blood sugar, because that's what my husband kept saying. Oh, maybe it's low blood sugar. Maybe you're getting gestational diabetes or something, you know. And I was like, no, but I, I drink my carnation breakfast usually before I get ready, so it shouldn't be low blood sugar. And um, so I was right. Yeah, I get to tell my husband that it was because of somebody's outside the door. But um, I'm in my clubhouse bathroom. But... It was because of my blood pressure, it's like from standing your blood pools, and, and so it's like the blood pressure leaving from, I believe it's leaving from your head, and um, so basically what I, what I do is I sit down and I drink a lot, like a big glass of cold water and just kind of wait, and in about five minutes I feel fine. So, okay, I have a feeling the maintenance guy is going to come and check the bathroom in a second, so I'm going to go ahead and stop here. But um, I just want to let everyone know that we are doing well. And let me just do a quick baby bump picture. Oh, and these are brand new maternity jeans that I just got at um, Macy's last week. They were having a sale. If you wore red, you would get, I think it was 20 or 25%. I think it's 20% off. And um, their motherhood, you can see them. And they're kind of stretchy or whatever. And um, I got them for, I believe, with tax and everything, $25. So I'm excited. Um, no more exercise pants. Yay, I have jeans. I can feel like a human and wear like little cute maternity tops and jeans now. But all right, thanks girls for watching. And if you haven't already, please find me on Facebook. My username is Kishi, K E I. S-H-Y, and then last name is T-T-C. Uh, I haven't changed it to do in May just because I want people to be able to find me and try to keep it a little bit consistent with my screen name here on YouTube. So, all right. Well, thanks. Bye, girls.